Hello, welcome back to Bible Reading with Study Guide. Well, we finished reading through the Bible. It took about a year for me. You take as long as you want or as little as you want. But now I want to start sharing what I've learned by reading the Bible. And some of it I've learned through our group Bible studies, small group studies, you know, where I've done a lot of reading. So today, yeah, there are some words in the Bible that sometimes we wonder if they relate to our lives. So I want to read in Romans. This is what we studied in our group, small group study. Romans 8. Okay. Romans 8. 35 and then 38 and 39. Remember, Romans is almost to the end of the Bible. Do you have it? Okay, I'm going to read it. Mine is in the New King James. Yours might be a little different. I don't know what version you have. But it should basically say the same thing. So Romans 8.35 says, Who shall separate us from the love of Christ? Shall tribulation, or distress, or persecution, or famine, or nakedness, or peril, or sword. And then verse 38 and 39. For I am persuaded that neither death, nor life, nor angels, nor principalities, nor powers, nor things present, nor things to come, nor height, nor depth, nor any other created thing, shall be able to separate us from the love of God, which is in Christ Jesus our Lord. Wow. Okay, so let's look at, do these things relate to you and your everyday life? Does it relate to me today? Yesterday? What about next year? So I have some notes from my Bible study. And it says we shall live, we can live each day with fearless faith when we realize that nothing can separate us from the love of Christ. Now, if that's important to you, that he, his love for you, then know this, that nothing can separate you from him. So how do these terms relate to life? So I looked them up in the dictionary, and we'll go over them one at a time. What's the first one? So tribulation, okay? Tribulation means being oppressed being troubled, being bothered. So it might not be anything huge, but it might be those little irritating things, or or maybe you got a troubling bill you didn't expect, or you got a flat tire, or maybe burned dinner, or maybe all kinds of things can cause you trouble. Your day isn't going smoothly. Okay, and that can't separate you from his love. What about, what's the next word? Distress. Okay, I'll look that up. And it's misfortune, suffering, or calamity. Well, you usually don't experience misfortune or calamity very often, right? I live in tornado country. And that could be a calamity if I experienced a tornado. I've lived in this area for about 27 years. The worst that I've experienced was back in 98 in the morning hours, you know, about 8.30 or so. We had what they decided was straight line winds which I'm not sure exactly what that means, but it, they don't go around. They come straight down and out. So, yeah, it took out most of our maple tree, the trees in the park. Just across the street, it took out six of their trees. One went, part of it went through the roof. So, but our house was spared. And seven years ago, 
not seven years ago, sorry, last year, seven miles away in a little town. They got hit by a tornado and it did lots of damage, lots of trees down and roof damage and things like that. I don't think any complete buildings were destroyed except maybe um, some farm buildings. So anyway, that's calamity. Did that separate me from the love of Christ? No. I can still rest in his love. If he's going to see me through whatever calamity happens. What about persecution? That's the next word. Well, some Christians are persecuted in other countries where, you know, they might be arrested. Their houses burned down. Their churches destroyed. They might go to jail. They might lose their life. But what about persecution in my life? So... The dictionary says persecution is aggravation, annoyance, teasing, and harassment. Doesn't that sound kind of like bullying? Somebody teasing you, bullying you on purpose, maybe because of your faith or for some other reason? That can't separate you from his love either. What's the next one? Famine. Well, I don't think anybody in my country is suffering from famine. But what is famine? It's a scarcity, lack, or shortages. Okay, well now maybe we are suffering some famine. Maybe we go to the grocery store and some of the shelves are bare. Or maybe you have a very low income and you don't have a lot to spend and you depend on government assistance to get food because you can't get enough food on your own so in a way you're suffering from a famine a scarcity of funds for what you need for your to feed you and your family what about nakedness? Well, the dictionary says that's a lack of clothing. Okay, now I haven't seen anybody running around with no clothing. But when you think about it, maybe you don't have money to go to the regular stores and buy clothing. Maybe you need to go to the secondhand stores and get used clothing. Maybe you have to clothe your children from garage sale clothes. So it's not nakedness, but it's a lack of maybe what you would prefer, right? I've done that. Got to garage sales and got clothes for my kids, especially when they're younger, because they grow through them so fast. But even so, you might not be able to get all that your teenagers want or you want. Yeah. What's the next word? Peril. Peril is danger, the dictionary says. So, are you in danger? I'm not in danger. I don't live in a dangerous area. Some people live in dangerous neighborhoods. Um, maybe we're in danger of our government collapsing. Maybe where you are. Or possibly... Um, Danger of losing a job, or in danger of losing, losing something. Maybe you can't make payments on your vehicle and they're going to come and take it. That's danger of losing something. What about the sword? Well, I don't see people fighting with swords, do you? But the dictionary says it's coercive power, threat of life. Or maybe livelihood, death, or death of someone close, or simply fighting and strife. I know there's crimes that go on, and sometimes it doesn't involve guns, sometimes it involves knives. But it sounds like strife and losing somehow. Maybe you're in danger of losing your life, your health, your home. 
Maybe you live in an unsafe environment. And I'm concerned if you do. I, I pray that the Lord keeps you safe. But see, nothing, nothing can keep you from his love. We are surrounded by him, completely enveloped. Even if life isn't going like we would like it to be, that's no proof of his love. His love is his love. It doesn't matter where we are or what we're experiencing. So know this. I will go on and read 38 and 39 again. For I am persuaded that neither death, nor life, nor angels, nor principalities, nor powers, nor things present, nor things to come, nor height, nor depth, nor any created thing shall be able to separate us from the love of God, which is in Christ Jesus our Lord. Nothing and no person can separate us from the love of God. Not lack of nice clothing, bullying people, calamity, losing employment, or a difficult home life. Nothing. We can hide in him. He is our rock. He is our defense. He is protecting the me inside, the you inside of you. We can live enveloped in his protective love. Now, isn't that good to know? So, this little note says, so go forth each day confidently, knowing nothing will happen to you outside of God's will. He has taken you on a journey. Live each day with fearless faith, confidently trusting your God See, those words, tribulation, distress, persecution, famine, nakedness, peril, sword, they really do relate to our lives, don't they? Sometimes we read the Bible and we don't think it relates. But there we just learned those three verses. Words that we didn't think related to our lives relate to our lives. Isn't that great to know? So we will discover further Next time, see what other words actually